I want you guys to look at Donald Trump. People have been, and people that I know, people that I'm close with, and, and just also people in the media and, and popular culture, like to talk about Trump's life. They like to say, well, look at Trump. You know, they like to show you pictures of Trump with this woman, with some women, or Trump you know, doing this or Trump doing that, you know, I don't know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, even as recently as five years ago, six years ago, you know, we saw Trump, uh, pictures of Trump with uh, Epstein. And I'll tell you guys, if you're asking yourself the, yourself the question, why the Democratic Party, why the media, why the elites, the global elites, why Hollywood, the majority of Hollywood, at least, the, at least the ones that talk in the open, have just taken the kitchen sink and thrown it at Trump, you know, and have tried him in the court of public opinion and in the court of just Twitter or Facebook or wherever, not in a court, in a court they couldn't prove anything, you know, or investigations couldn't prove anything, but public opinion, before he was even sworn in as president, my friends, if you're wondering why that's the case, because, and I use the term loosely with Trump, relatively speaking, relatively speaking, very loosely, Trump, compared to these people, compared to them, is a Baltruva. He's a person who lived among them. He's a person who hobnobbed with them. He went to their parties. He was friends with them. He went to their kids' weddings. He gave them money, both Republican and Democrat. He donated, you know, he donated them, gave them gifts. He did them favors. He did business with them. He went on their shows. He went on their Comedy Central roasts. They made fun of him, he made fun of them, he had a show, they were on his show, he fired them, he hired them. It's all, it was all love. Until the year 2015, my friends, it was all love. And you can imagine, with everything I that I just mentioned, he saw, Trump saw all of their stuff, all of their misdeeds, all of their crap. He saw it all. Maybe he even participated. Maybe not. I don't know. But he definitely saw it. So now, a person like that, all of a sudden, comes out and he says, well, I'm going to run for president. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, as he calls it, drain the swamp. What does that mean? What does draining the swamp mean? If you're in Hollywood, you start to think, oh my God, he's going to drain me. He's going to expose all my crap. If you're, you know, and, and Weinstein was the tip of the iceberg. Weinstein was a, what's called in, in, in Hebrew a korban. He was a sacrifice, okay, for the, you know, the Me Too culture, the cancel culture. If you're a politician, you're like, oh my God, I can't continue with this 40 years of crap that I've been doing, 30 years, even 25 years, 20 years. My friends, he saw all of their stuff both Republican and Democrat. He was a Democrat at one point. He saw it all. He has dirt on everybody. And he's a person who has now decided that he's not going to participate in that any longer. And he said it outright. So now imagine you're one of these people. You're a global elite. You are an actor. You're a politician. And you, and you know that he knows what are you going to do? You are going to scratch and claw and you will, you will do, you know, concoct every single narrative, every single, you know, just cockamamie thing. In Hebrew, what we call Lashon Hara. You are going to go to the end of the earth in, a, in the, probably the most Machiavellian way where the ends justify the means to stop this man. You will make things up. You will call him, 
I don't know, you will create a story that this guy is a misogynist and a racist and a, and a homophobe and an anti-Semite, despite evidence, clear evidence to the contrary. And when people come to you with the evidence, you'll say, well, no, he's doing it. And you'll, and you'll say he's doing it because of this, because he wants votes or because he, I don't know, whatever. You, you'll, you'll, you'll come up with something and you will do it for three and a half hours. Actually, four years. You'll you'll just and 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 even when the guy, it's clear that the person is elected. You will concoct a scheme to not have him elected, and then when you do that, you will unleash the very media that you unleashed for four years to it to try him in the court of public opinion without any evidence, you will then come and you will gaslight the people that are coming and saying that, that there's fraud and you will just write a headline after headline after headline. And the headlines are the same. No, there is no fraud. 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 No, this server wasn't raided. No, this company didn't, you know, screw up the ballots. No, this, you know, the doors were not closed. People were let in, uh, were not uh, denied access to... Uh, you know, watch ballots, watch uh, election workers. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a clear case of a person who was in it, who was deep in it. He left it. He became, again, I'm, I'm using this very relatively and loosely, he became a Balshuva and he cannot be bought. The scariest man in any political setting is a man that cannot be paid a dime to do what you want him to do it is the scariest person it's a combination of this like a man who cannot be paid and a man who knows everything who knows everything about you if you are an actor if you are a politician if you are an elitist you know one of those guys that goes to world economic forum in davos it's scary as flip. I'm not going to use the other four-letter word, my friends. If I was one of these people, I'd do the same. I would fight tooth and nail to keep this person away from anything. And you see now, they're saying, once this guy leaves, we're going to go after him legally. We're going to go after his taxes. We're going to see what we can f dig up on him and find on him that he did, I don't know, whenever he did it, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, you know, something with taxes or something with whatever. Because they don't want this guy coming back. They don't want him coming back ever. Because God forbid he does. For them. Because again, ladies and gentlemen, this is a person who was in it. He saw it all. And yes, you can say he talked about grabbing this and grabbing that. But you know what? My friends, all of the people... You know, I'll give you an example. All of the women, all of these actor actresses that marched in this pink hat march, they had men grab everything. They, their whole act was about grabbing and this and that and the other. And, you know, and then they invite this uh, Linda Sarsour, who was up, to, if it was up to her, not one of those women would be having an abortion. I could tell you that much. Abortion would be illegal. If it was up to her and the society that she comes from, women get stoned for doing what the women in the Women's March are propagating. So, and so, the people that are calling him all these names, these are people who, you know, if Trump talks about it, these are people who did it. Bill Clinton... The list goes on and on, my friends. All these actors, all these elitists, all these politicians. My God, if that ain't the pot calling the kettle black, I don't know what is, my friends. I really don't know what is. And if you're saying, well, he's the president, he should be above everybody. You're, you know, I had a lot of Jewish people tell me this, Froom Jews. And I said, you know, excuse me, you're barking up the wrong religion. You really are. You're barking up the wrong religion religion. This guy is not going to be JC Penney, Mr. Yoshke. He's not going to be Mashiach. 
He's going to be who he is, and he's going to play the role that he was given, which is actually to elevate Israel, to declare. Because, my friends, if Rav Cook was alive today, if Rav, Rav um, Avram uh, Yitzhak Cohen Cook was alive today, he would say that uh, an American president who declares Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, it is not a political machination, it is a spiritual machination. An American president who declares the Golan Heights as part of Israel, an American president who says that, you know, Bechavot, please annex or declare sovereignty over your ancient heartland, Judea and Samaria, that is a spiritual machination, my friends. As above, so below. That is a spiritual machination. That has never happened in history. And I had a friend tell me, yeah, he did it for the votes. What votes of the immovable 75% of Jews who vote Democrat? What? What votes? Ladies and gentlemen, what you're witnessing is something related to the Tanakh. It's something related to, to something that we can't even understand. Something that I speak to 99% of even Orthodox Jews, they don't even understand what's going on. They're not even tapped into that on that level. And this is what we're seeing. And if you look at history, if you look at the history of how the elite in America, both Republican and Democrat, have treated the Jewish state and how they've impeded the Jews from doing what's called, quote-unquote, the tikkun, you will understand that Donald J. Trump is their worst nightmare. What he's doing by allowing Israel to be who Israel needs to become and our mission, to fulfill our mission in the world, which is largely spiritual, it is their worst nightmare. It is the worst nightmare of Republican James Baker and uh, George Bush's father, as much as it is the, is the nightmare of Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, and Barack Obama for sure, Kamala Harris for sure, Joe Biden for sure, who spoke at the J Street conference maybe twice. Ladies and gentlemen, and the fact that there's peace made with the Arab nation states, and this is something that cannot be now reneged on or, re or rewound. And you can say, well, you know, there's Iran at play here, whatever it is. My friends, this hasn't happened. Iran has been a threat since 1979. Was Saudi Arabia normalizing relations with Israel? For the past, <laughs> for, I don't know, 30-something years? You know, they could, have, they could have asked for Israel's help in 1981, 1980, when they saw that Israel bombed Iraq, the Osirak re reactor. You know, that they could have, they, they saw that Israel could defend them. Maybe they had clandestine, I don't know, clandestine uh, cooperation. My friends, the point is there's a person who was sent by a Shem, as imperfect as he is. All the stuff that he did, all the stuff that he participated, all the people he was friends with, all the actors and all the elites and all of this and all of that. You may, may not like the way he tweets. Like I, like I said, you know, from uh, the movie uh, Boiler Room. Tell him you don't like his flippin' necktie. But this is who Hashem sent, my friends. This is who Hashem sent. He's not Mashiach. He just has a job. And the people who he was close with in his previous life, in his previous pre-Bal life, the actors, the elitists, the Davos people, the politicians, both Republican and Democrat, he is their worst nightmare. They cannot pay him. They cannot pay him. And this is why he has been the most harangued president. Starting with, I don't know, they planned this in October, my friends. October 2016. And they, and they set the machinations before he was inaugurated. Think about that. And he hadn't done a thing. He hadn't even done a thing. And we found out that whatever they thought he did, or whatever, rather, whatever they said that he did, and tried to convince the world of that he did, he did not do. And in fact, they are the ones who participated in that with uranium. Won't even get into it. But the point is, my friends, what we have here is a case of a Baal Shuva president who is 
being pestered by his former life. And his former life, it can't suck him back in. It desperately wants to, and it also desperately wants to suck us back into it. And uh, unfortunately, now we're at risk of going back to that former life. And um, we should know that. We should be aware of that. And uh, we should be vigilant. That's all, my friends. That's all. I, that's all I have to say for now. <laughs> I hope this somehow resonates. And uh, if you guys think what I'm saying is hogwash, okay, as you were, as you were. But uh, just know that if Biden is in fact the president, and and, and if Biden does in fact take the oath on January 20th and if everything goes back to especially when it comes to Israel goes back to the way that it was do not say that I did not warn you have a good one my friends